seatbelt light. Please take your seat and fasten your seatbelts. Thank you. Hi there, Madcap Propeller Heads. Welcome to Flare 2017 R2. The bulk of this release is all about HTML5 output, and in many cases, top navigation in particular. Here's what's new. First, you can now use Google Search as an alternative to Madcap Search. This option is available if you're building HTML5 top navigation or skinless output. There are benefits to both the Google and Madcap search methods. Some users might prefer the search results returned by Google. However, others might prefer the results returned by Madcap, especially since the Madcap search rankings are specifically tailored for Flare users. To determine the type of search that's best for you, we recommend that you generate different outputs using each method. Then perform several different searches and see which results you like best. Using Google Search involves a combination of steps on your Google Internet account, in addition to a few steps in Flare. Not all of the steps in your Google account are required for integrating Search with Flare, but they are recommended. Also, the exact steps that you follow may be somewhat different if you're using a free Google account as opposed to a paid account. You will start in your Google account by creating a search engine ID. Then, in your Flare project, you open the Search tab in your HTML5 target and choose Google Search. After providing your generated Google Search Engine ID, we also recommend you create a sitemap. After this, you can return to your Google account to perform a variety of other tasks, such as verifying your URL, adding your sitemap, submitting your site for indexing, and more. All of these steps are spelled out in this online help topic in Flare. After you generate and publish your output, you'll know that Google Search is being used because you will see this text in the search field. Also new to this release is the ability to add favicons to your HTML5 output. Even if you've never heard the word favicon before, you've certainly seen one. Whether you pronounce it favicon, favicon, or whatever, it stands for favorite icon. You know when you open a website and see the little icon on the browser tab or next to a bookmark? That's a favicon. There are several places in the output where a favicon image might display. Therefore, it's common to use different sizes of an image to satisfy each instance appropriately. Fortunately, Flare makes this easier by letting you select a large master favicon image. This image is then automatically resized for most of the different uses in the output. To use custom favicons, you first need to add a new favicon skin component to your project. Within this skin component, you can start by selecting your master favicon image. We recommend that you select a square image that is 558 pixels or larger. After you add this image, you'll see in the preview areas below that your image has been added. You will see three different areas. First, there's the browser area. This shows how your image will be seen in different areas of a standard browser, such as on tabs and next to bookmarks. If you expand the Options drop-down, you'll see some additional fields. If you entered a master favicon that was large enough, this image will be automatically generated and resized as necessary. The different sizes shown, 16, 32, and 96 pixels, are necessary due to the various types of browsers on the market, their age, and their resolution. You can override your image in any of these fields, but most likely you won't want to. Second, there is the iOS Android area. This shows how the image will be shown on iPhone and Android smartphone screens when a user adds a web page from your output to the home screen. If you expand the options area, you'll see that the 180 pixel image was auto-generated from your master favicon image. And third, there is the Windows area. This shows how the image will be shown in the tile format used in Windows 8 and Windows 10. When you expand the options area, you're going to see several fields. The first four fields have to do with the different sizes of tiles that users can view in Windows. The wide field won't have a generated image. That's because you chose a square image for the master favicon, and this field requires a rectangular image. Therefore, you can provide it manually in this field. The recommended size is 558 pixels wide by 270 pixels high. There are two other fields in this area. The first one lets you enter the URL where your output will be published. This is a pretty important field to complete because Windows tile images are relative to the root location of your output. Also, if you plan to use the same skin component image for different outputs, you'll probably want to use the Variables button so that the correct path variation is automatically used for each output. And finally, you can change the background color for your tile images. Another new feature in this version of Flare is fixed headers. If you create top navigation output, you'll be familiar with the header that appears at the top of topics. Normally, when a user scrolls down in a topic, this header disappears from view with the rest of the content. But now, you can open your HTML5 skin, select the Setup tab, and tell Flare to keep that header in place. 
You can do this for large size screens, in other words, web, for smaller tablet or mobile screens, or for all of them. When users view a long topic and scroll down, the header will remain in view at the top. Not only can you fix headers in this version of Flare, but you can also fix topic menus. These are the menus that can be placed on the side of topics in top navigation output. Normally, these menus scroll out of view with the rest of the topic content, but now you can open the skin component, select the setup tab, and set the menu to be fixed. Like the fixed header, this can be done for the different sized screens used to view the output. But here's another wrinkle to this. Let's say you have a topic menu, like those we included in the Top Navigation Project templates, where the menu floats to the right of some content, with other content wrapping below it. And now you decide that you want that menu to be fixed in place. If you do that, you're going to notice that the menu will obstruct some text as users scroll down. A solution to this issue is to use a two-column format, instead of a format where the menu floats to the right. With a two-column format, your content would display in the left column, and the menu would display on the right column. To help you with this, we've added a few new files to our Top Navigation Project templates. First, you'll notice that there are now two skin component files. In one of these files, the menu is not fixed, and in the other file, it is fixed. Second, in the Content Explorer, there is an additional master page that is designated for the two-column format, with the idea that the menu will be fixed. And third, you're going to see a second HTML5 target file. The first target file is integrated with the skin component and master page that do not use a fixed menu. The second target file is integrated with the skin component and master page that have a fixed menu and two-column format. So just use whichever setup that you like best. If you have an existing Flare project where you're building top navigation output and you want to use a two-column format with a fixed side menu, see this online help topic. It describes how to make the necessary changes to your project. There is another new feature related to topic menus. This is the ability to display headings instead of topics in the menu. In previous versions, you would open the menu proxy dialog and tell Flare which TOC or browse sequence that you want to be related to the menu. Then in the output, the menu would provide links to the topics in that TOC or browse sequence. But now you also have the option to choose headings. If you do that, the menu will not display links to other topics. Instead, it will display any headings and subheadings throughout the topic. By subheadings, we're talking about text using heading styles such as H1, H2, H3, and so on. Also, when viewing a topic that's set up like this, and the menu is fixed in place, each subheading section will be highlighted as you scroll down in the topic. You can also now use a tree format for slide-out menus and top navigation output. The slide-out menu is shown when users click the hamburger icon in tablet or mobile view. The drill-down format of this menu looks like this. With this format, any item containing sub-items has a double arrow next to it. When you click on an item, the entire menu changes, showing only that item and its sub-items. But now you can use a tree format instead. To do this, open the skin and in the Setup tab, choose Tree. The slide-out menu will look like this. Any item containing sub-items has a down arrow next to it. When you click on that item, the sub-items are shown, but the rest of the menu remains in view as well. You can use the Styles tab to change the color and size of the arrows used in the tree format. And finally, Flare is now integrated with Salesforce. So if you need to publish your clean XHTML output to Salesforce, you can purchase a special Salesforce integration key that lets you do this. When installing Flare, choose the option to do a custom installation, then choose the Salesforce Connect option. When you set up a destination file, choose Salesforce Connect as the type, then complete the fields below. See this online help topic for details about each field and additional information you need to know about Salesforce integration. When you publish a target that's associated with that destination file, the output will automatically be published to Salesforce. For more information about all of these new features and a few more, see the What's New topic in the online help. Enjoy the new Flare 2017 R2.